It's the first day for three brand new families in the house of Tiny Terraways. Trust me, it's going to be an emotional ride. Welcome to the house of Tiny Terraways. A place of hope, a place of reflection. For this week's families, a place that just could change their lives forever. Three families, all struggling to cope with their tearaway toddlers, have been invited to live here and try and turn their lives around in just six days. And the person who's going to help them with this daunting task is clinical psychologist Dr Tanya Byron. My challenge is to help as many families as I can and I've been given just six days to do it. The design and construction of the house has been completed in conjunction with a committee of childcare experts to make sure that it's a safe, fun place for kids to stay, whilst also recreating a realistic and practical home environment. The remote cameras and those located behind the two-way mirrors allow Dr Tanya to observe the pitfalls and the progress. Thank you, Mummy. The tantrums and the tears, 24 hours a day, every day. Some of them might have problems that'll take six months to crack, not six days. But I hope at least I can show them the first steps. For the families chosen to be part of this unique program, this is make or break. For Dr. Tanya Byron, this is the biggest challenge of her career. This is the house of tiny tearaways. And this is our first family of the week. The Dixons. Gravy tastes like your chocolate buttons. <laughs> Don't let me. Zara and Darren Dixon from Plymouth face so many problems with their five-year-old Harrison that they don't know where to start. Harrison won't eat properly, won't sleep properly, and his behaviour is totally out of control. He's very nasty. He's punching me all the time. He's kicking me, hitting me. He started biting as well now. Stand there, stop hitting. Don't hit, because it hurts. I've ended up with bruises up my arm before and all on the tops of my legs where he's kicking me. Don't! Me aching! Oh, good! 31-year-old builder Darren dreads confronting Harrison's terrible behaviour. Sometimes I'm afraid to come in the door after work, which is really not the way the father and son should be. Put it down now. No! It should be, hello, son. How's your day at school? Not, hello, Harry. What have you done today? Sarah and Darren aren't alone in having to deal with Harrison. There's also 11-year-old Kira, Sarah's daughter from a previous relationship. He's always mean to me. Well, if he doesn't get his own way, he always comes up to me and starts punching you and flicking you and stuff. You're not sitting in the front. Taking Harry out into public is very embarrassing. When he comes up and he says, I hate you, bitch. And everybody just sort of looks, so to say, oh, what an horrible little boy. <laughs> he pinches, he flicks. I mean, he flicks anybody. You don't care who it is, he just flicks them. I've seen him hit other children that you don't even know. Don't you smack me right in the face! And Harrison's diet is even more limited than his manners. Harrison lives on bread, milk, and butter chocolate buns. <laughs> He has about six packets in the morning, six for lunch, six for tea. I mean, it's not funny really, is it? But I can't help it. Harrison's never had a piece of fruit. Never had a vegetable since he's been born. No! To try and get Harrison to sit and eat a meal with us is an absolute nightmare. This gravy's nice. No! Sometimes he's picked the food up and he's thrown it. <laughs> try it. It's just an absolute battleground. Sometimes I don't even bother. I just let him run around while we're eating. And as if his behaviour and diet weren't bad enough, the trouble doesn't end at bedtime. You'll just keep making that noise now till me or Sarah gives in. He wakes me up twice a night and in the end I just give up and bring him in with me. So. Since Harry's been born, me and Darren's had our bed to ourselves five times. Puts quite a big strain on mine and Darren's relationship. You know, you've got a five-year-old in between you. It's two o'clock in the morning. I thought you were staying your own bed at least. There's obviously no romance. 
It's the marital bed, isn't it? You should be in there with just your wife, not not your five-year-old son. The cuddly toy or a tractor wedged up your backside or something. There's a lot of strain on your marriage as well. Both arguing about who's doing something wrong. Nearly gone for a divorce once um, over Harrison. Daddy shouldn't give in. And just before Christmas, I kicked him out for about three days. Um, I end up in tears all the time. The moment Darren's in the door, you are having him, bye, and I'm out the door and I drive up on the moors and just sit in the car for 10 minutes and cry. Sit. No. What I would preferably like to get is not have that anxiety about walking in the door for Harry to come home from school, do as he's told, and listen to me and Sarah, but also get a good night's sleep. I just want us to have our bed back and for Harrison to actually go to bed at a reasonable time and say at half past seven, so me and Darren's got quality time to ourselves, so we've got our relationship back as well. This one here, look. No, mate. It's the first here, day look, of mate. assessment for the Dixon family. Whoa. Tani watches house. their arrival from yeah. her office. Oh. oh my God. Oh, oh look. My God. We've got to live here for a week, Harry. Yeah. After reading we'll case notes and week. watching video footage, oh, wow, Harry, this is her first chance to see oh, them up close wow. in what will be their new home oh. for the next six days. Oh, wow. That's nice. Look. To give Harrison more individual oh, like time fish, with Tanya, Sarah's 11-year-old yeah. daughter, Kira, is staying She's with her grandparents sort of for the week. Um, I joined Tanya to get her initial space. reaction. Were you shocked as I was when you saw the video? I mean, he calls his mum bitch. He says other words that I'm not allowed to say. I suppose actually what shocked me more, or what surprised me more, was the, the bit when she was describing him and he was sitting right next to her and the fact that Sarah could be so open about what a monster she finds him, how difficult she finds him in front of him. That's the camera. <gasps> what kick it, Dad? No, you won't kick it. I'll let you all your... I'll oh, let... look, we put all your clothes away in here, like Harry, for the week. Is it moving? I'm watching yeah. you. He's watching you. Don't you dare do that. Mm. Stuck his finger up. Did he just do what I th mm. think he mm. did? Mm. Yes. More interestingly, did you see that uh, Sarah's reaction? What yeah. did she do? Did she swipe him? So you want your child not to make an uh, aggressive or inappropriate physical action. You don't want to be... What should she have done? Well, that's for me to work out, I guess. Right. But um, at least we know what we're dealing with here. Oh, Harry! Yeah? Look at this! What? Buttons! Yay! And your bread? Yeah. What would you like? And your crisps? Buttons. Packet of buttons? Yay! They're very worried about his eating. He's the little boy that eats five packets of chocolate buttons a day. How could parents find themselves in this trap? Is it just for a quiet life to continuously just give chocolate? Yeah, I think it is for a quiet life and it's also, it's, there's so much parental anxiety around feeding that it's almost, well, at least he's getting something in him. Don't touch. Don't bang it, Harry. See that, see that one there? Where's my button? They're there. It oh seems to be behaviour that goes across so many things. We've got behaviour problems, we've got feeding problems, we've got sleeping problems, and we've also got sort of no, relationship like problems, particularly between Mum and Harry, because Mum herself says that she doesn't really enjoy him anymore. So looking ahead for the week for the Dixons, you've got six days to change quite a lot. What tools and what methods are you going to use, do you think? He's going to be a tricky one, really, to sort out. I think I'm, I'm going to spend some time just on the relationship between the three of them. So getting them to enjoy him and play with him and getting to know him other than Harrison, the monster or the difficult child is, would be my first thing to do. After yeah. observing the Dixons for almost an hour, Tony needs to meet them in person. It's so tell me why you're here and how can I help you? The main concern is... is Eating, eating is his main yeah. one. He just lives on milk. Yeah. Bread and butter and chocolate buttons. And that's it. No and what would happen if there was Dad? absolutely no milk and no chocolate Mom, buttons Dad? and no bread and butter Daddy? and put a meal in front of him? Just He'd Dad? chuck it and yeah. have a scream of it. Is OK. It? Feeding is Dad, one problem. Me Tell me about sleeping. Um, Harrison will only go to sleep on the settee. Once he's sound asleep, he's got to have a nappy on and carried to his bed. If he stays asleep when carried to bed, he will stay in his bed for about two hours and then normally he's in with us. And he's right. in with us all night then. 
So how many nights since he's been born have you had a night together in your bed? Five. Five nights? Yeah. Since he's been born yeah. five years and three months ago? Yeah. He's quite, strong, he's quite a strong person. In the mornings when I'm getting him ready for school, Harrison will kick, scream, punch. I've ended up with bruises down my leg where he won't get dressed. Mm. Really he's the it. dominant male in yeah, the house. Very. He's the dominant Alpha one. Alpha male. Mm. Yeah. And he knows it. Is it having an impact on you, Sarah, in terms of your feelings oh. about yourself oh. as a woman, as a mother, as a partner? Um, as a mother, it's getting it As down. a mother, yeah, like I failed. You feel I've, like you failed? Yeah, with, with him. Oh, babe. Oh. Harry, whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry, that. it's all right. Some days I just hate Harry and I just... It shouldn't I'm be like that. sounds really horrible, but I wish I never had him and it shouldn't be like that. Come on. Okay. Does he see you like this much? No. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, but not... I do, but I try not to show it in front of him. And he, if he does see me upset, he says sorry and he cuddles me. <laughs> oh, darling. Oh, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Why don't you have a cuddle with Mummy and Daddy? Come on, I've got Daddy's lap. Yeah. Why? Right. Yeah. Want to cuddle Mummy? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I think it's because he knows I'm upset. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, mate. Oh, oh you're out, out the two kids we got, he's the one who says he loves us the most, isn't it? He says it all the time. <laughs> Mummy's OK. And Mummy's all right. <laughs> Harry, shall I tell you something? Listen, listen. Mummy's come here cos I'm going to help Mummy and Daddy so don't not get feel upset. sad anymore. That's what I'm going to do. Tanya's going to help us so we don't feel sad. Is that good? And do you know how we're going to do it? We're going to do it by lots of playing and lots of cuddling. <laughs> Tanya decides she has to chat with Mum nice Sarah outside. alone. See, See you in a minute. minute. Bye. Bye, Harry. Mm. All right? Yeah. Do you like him? Um, some days I do, some days I don't. Most of the time? Most of the time I hate him. Oh. I shouldn't feel like that. Maybe that's the first thing we can start thinking about together, yeah? We definitely I've can. Got a, I've got a different kind of love for him than what I have for Kira. Oh, Describe the difference. I don't know, maybe it's because he's a boy, but when he was born, I was really disappointed that it was a boy. I don't know, I think I've got a closer bond with Kira than I have with Harrison. We've got six days. What's our target? What are you going to set for me to help you with? I just want to... Um, I think I want to try and love Harry more. Can we solve everything in six days? Um, I hope so. <laughs> try and, you know, hope so. Tani's had a revealing first chat with the Dixons. But how can she help the next family? The McMillans. <laughs> Kelsey McMillan is a defiant four-year-old whose challenging behaviour is running her mother ragged. Kelsey! Don't run off, please. Yeah, well, we're not supposed to be painting the parade, 28 year old Sarah McMillan, a single mother from Deal and Kent, decided to give up and her then career as a care worker when Kelsey was born. I wanted to devote all my time to Kelsey and give her my full attention. I knew it was going to be hard work being a mum, knew that full stop, but I didn't think how hard it was going to be. All you've got to do is put your toys back in your toy box. No, mummy's going downstairs. Kelsey, when she was a baby, she was a diamond. Absolutely lovely baby. I was hoping and thought that it was going to be like that throughout. I knew there was going to be the terrible twos, but it sort of ended up being terrible twos, terrible threes, and now we're getting on to the terrible fours. It's a battle of wills in the Macmillan household, and the endless fighting is having a negative impact on Kelsey and Sarah's relationship. No. Yes. No. I'm not arguing with you, Kelsey. The constant ones, I hate you. I always get that, she hates me. Um, she doesn't want to live with me anymore. She wants a new mummy and daddy. No, I'm on the floor, please. I'd really like to stop saying to Kelsey no all the time. No. No. No, no. Because um, everything seems to be a no, please don't touch that, please don't do this. No. Stop running off. And it's just always everything's the same that comes out of my mouth. You've got 
to go home. Come here, please. And Kelsey's stubbornness is at its worst Don't when Sarah collects her from well. play school. Where's the other one go? We've got to go home, I'm sorry. Well, she goes to play school Mondays, Thursdays and Fridays. It usually takes about half an hour to get out of play school. Don't kick me. The teachers have tried getting her out and even the teachers can't. She'll just kick the teachers. Stop it. Not round the face. Stop it. No. She normally just screams and shouts all the way home. No. She'll throw herself to the floor. She won't get back up. She'll stop, won't move. Or she'll run off. No, oh, you're not crawling along the road. Get up, please. Let me go! Get off with me. Let me go! Stand up and walk properly, please. All right, you stay down there on the floor then. Don't hit me, please. Um, but this is a general thing. It normally takes us anything from sort of half an hour sometimes three quarters now to actually get home from play school. Getting to play school only normally takes about 15 minutes. By the time we get home, I'm just so worn out because everything's just a constant fight, a constant struggle. Sarah has tried everything to curb Kelsey's aggressive behaviour, but nothing seems to be working, including the naughty step. As soon as I start to lose my grip on her, she'll start straight away headbutting you and then it'll be the elbows kicking and everything and she goes wild. <laughs> Things have got to the stage now that I'm at the end of my tether, I can't cope with it anymore. <laughs> She's got me so worn out, so tired, everything's just a complete fight all the time and I can't take it no more. No, come on. I don't want to go, Mummy. Yes, we've got to go in. <laughs> come on. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. Hello. <laughs> Do you want to go and say hello to her, Harrison? Do you want to say hello to the little girl? Come see you. Come see the little boy, say hello. Come on. Come see the little boy. Sarah's aim is to bond with her daughter and to control her behaviour. Do you think you can do it, having seen how she behaves at home in just six days? I think Kelsey's going to be quite a tough one. I think Kelsey's going to have a few tantrums in this house. Yeah. See, I've had everybody just don't believe me what Kelsey's like. We get and, that. Uh, yeah. yeah. And everybody look, oh no, she's such a lovely little girl. And it's like, she's not. She's not. How difficult do you think it is to be a sole parent? She's just coming to the house, she's by herself. Tough. Tough, tough, tough. tough. Because she's the only person who's got to do everything. Yeah. With the couples, there's always a sense of kind of working together, one taking on more responsibility than the other. But I hope that, you know, this whole community that we've set up here, and because they do share similar problems, that it's really nice they're already talking, that they will support each other as well, because that will accelerate the change. So for me, it's not just assessing the children today, but looking at the way the community bonds. Before any of the families arrived in the house, Tony deliberately placed a sweet dispenser on view in the kitchen. No, no, no. <laughs> Sorry. You hurt me, Mummy. Well, you shouldn't have taken the sweetie. You know you're not allowed them. Tony, that was a proper whack, wasn't it, to her mum's bottom? I think this child gets smacked. Do you? Well. Children usually smack because they get smacked and I think the immediate response was bang, you hurt me mummy. I suspect that we've that, that's happened the other way around, that smacking is a form. I, I, I'll ask because I've obviously not met Sarah yet but I suspect that she's a smacker because she possibly has been smacked. Do you Come want on, out of the way please. Drink water? No. Alright, we'll just stand with my finger over there then. Dad, take this in. No. You have your water, then sit down at the table with it then. You yeah. just said you wanted what? a drink of water, so Mummy did you one. Yeah. Not in there. Don't push this. it all over, please. I'm chucking it in. OK, so that's Kelsey and Sarah. They're in the house. Oh, already I feel like lots to do. Not very much time to do it in. It's a 
assessment day in the house of Tiny Tearaways. And before Dr. Tiny can begin to treat the problems of this week's three families, she needs to spend the whole day watching in order to gauge where things have gone wrong. So far, two families have arrived, hoping to solve their parental problems in an environment of mutual support. The Dixons from Plymouth were the first to arrive. Mum Sarah and Dad Darren have brought five-year-old Harrison to try and turn around his behavioural issues. At home, Harrison is a very difficult child. He will shout, scream and even lash out if he doesn't get his own way. And at the dinner table, will only eat chocolate buttons and bread. And it doesn't stop there. Bedtimes are a huge problem, with Harrison regularly going to bed at 11.30 at night and insisting on sleeping in his parents' bed. Second to arrive was Sarah McMillan from Kent and her four-year-old daughter, Kelsey. Sarah is at breaking point, trying to deal with Kelsey's turbulent behaviour and hopes Tani can help her get control over her daughter's tantrums. With two of our three families now in the house, Tania has her work cut out. I'm sitting there. Okay. Having watched the Macmillans arrive and settle in, Tania heads outside for a chat with Sarah, whilst Kelsey is looked after by the Dixons. What do you see? Tell me what you see. Um, at the moment, everything's negative. Um, she is a lovely little girl. She's v No, put your coat back on, please. Um, she's a very tactile, loving little girl. Take away the attention and then she's tearing cow. around. She's <laughs> a cow. A cow? Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's that bad? Yeah. Your daughter's yep. a cow? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, Tell exactly. Tell me about that then. If she's not getting my constant attention all the time, she's horrible. Right. She really is horrible. She'll come up, she'll hit me, um, she'll throw stuff at me until she can get my attention. How often do you lose it? I mean, do, would you say you shout at her quite a lot? Mm, every day. So there's lots of shouting, she shouts back? Yep. She's very argumentative. Um, there's, it's just as if when I was a child or when I was younger and it was me and my mum shouting at each other, it's exactly the same. So you've got the same relationship with your daughter that you had with your mum? Yep. And how do you deal with her? What's the discipline strategies that you've used? Um, at the moment, I use stairs, time out on the stairs. And does she sit there? No, I have to restrain her there. I have so to you're restraining hold her, her yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and that's really the only sort of discipline that I'm using. She gets a warning mm -hmm. if she carries on. Well, she gets counting mm -hmm. and a warning. If she carries it on, she gets another warning and then it's removed to the stairs. Do you um, shout? Do you smack? Um, I have smacked in the past. At the moment, I'm not. Mm -hmm. um, Tell me about the smacking. Shouting. Just, just where? It doesn't work. Where do you smack Legs her? or top of her arm or sort of here, back of the leg. But arm. not recently? No. <laughs> just so I can get a real sense of what it is that you're wanting from this week, mm -hmm. give me the sort of bullet points. What are the problems and what do you want me to solve in six days? Um, basically, Kelsey's behaviours are hitting me. Right. Um, she hits me, headbutts me, kicks me all the time. And to be able to get to go places without her, at the moment she lies down in the road mm. or lies down on the footpath and she refuses to move. So it's the behaviour mostly? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if I had a magic wand and I waved it over her and you, mm -hmm. where, how would you be leaving next Friday? Happier. Both of us getting on better. I'd like that. You're not happy at the moment? Um, I don't know, at the moment I just seem to be, my moods, normally I'm a really happy, happy person, but at the moment I just seem, as I'm a nervous wreck. Who's the biggest problem that I've got to deal with, Kelsey or you? Me. It's you, is it? Yeah. Because? Yeah. I've tried making Kelsey like me, mm. and I don't think I should have. I think I've made her too independent, way mm. too independent. Um, she's too grown up for her age, she's not really a four-year-old, she's more like a nine-year-old. Mm. Uh, Do you love her? I love her to pieces. Do you like She's her? my world. No, you not at the like moment, her. no. Do you think we can do it? Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully. I would do anything to get her, get my little girl back. Get your little girl back? Yeah, get my little girl back. I would oh, do right. anything. <laughs> Earlier on, you talked to Sarah outside in the gazebo, and she said that she smacks her daughter, which you said to me uh, you thought that she might do. She stopped about three weeks ago. If you smack your child, you may be smacking them in response to something you don't want them to do, but smacking in itself is a behaviour. And the number of parents I've worked with who smack their children in response to their children smacking is incredible. Um, as a role model, what you're saying is, smacking is OK, because I do it. Um, she does smack her mum quite hard on the bottom. I suspect yeah. she's been smacked quite hard on the bottom. For me, 
there's no smacking in this house and also there are m far more effective ways of managing behaviour without causing physical pain to yourself or the child and without you feeling guilty. She did say quite proudly, which I thought the... I don't know how you felt, but that conversation, she often said incredibly warm things mm. and then would call her a little cow. Sarah and Kelsey have a similar relationship to Sarah and Harry, which is this child is either a monster or is lovely. There's but no there's nothing middle. in between. Yeah. So very similar problems for, for, for both these families. One of the many reasons Darren and Sarah Dixon have brought five-year-old Harrison here yeah. is for help with his eating. Harrison has never eaten a whole meal in his life. His diet consists mainly of chocolate buttons and milk. All he will eat for lunch is a bread and butter sandwich, and sometimes he won't even eat that. Yeah. Come and get your bread and butter, please. No, nothing. Come on, monkey boy. No crisps. Okay. Come on. No, no. You've got to. No, no, no. Why? Oh, look, it's your favourite bread, look. It's no. It says, look, with the butter in it. <laughs> look, look, I'll put it there on the edge of the plate for you. No. He's not. Don't go to hit me. Come on. No, nothing. Come on. No, nothing. Get your feet around the chair and sit and eat. No. Don't ask for nothing later. You're not having nothing later, Harry. Don't kick either. <laughs> very, very negative interaction. Yeah. So negative. Why don't you want the tent? No. Quick, 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 quick. Shall I help you? No. Harry's turn. No. <laughs> Daddy will need it. No. Speak your own problem. No. <laughs> Sit. <laughs> Sit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want to go out there and see if I can turn it round just by. What are you doing? I, I'm just. I, I can't let this carry on. I'm just going to go and see if I can do anything, and then at least I know how far the problem goes. Okay. Okay. Well, you ain't going to eat it. You ain't going to eat it. Don't ask for nothing else. <laughs> you don't get no buttons. Hello. Hello, sweetie. Hiya. Hello. This is typical. Yeah. Yes. I, yes. I, I am eating my one nicely. You are. You are, are you're doing eating yours very, well. very nicely. What are you having for your lunch? Cheese. And where's your lunch, darling? Has it been taken away? Can I see it? Is that okay? So this is how. Is this your lunch, sweetie pie? And you're feeling. Let me see you. You're feeling very sad about having your lunch, aren't you? Is your tummy feeling hungry? No? OK. What I wanted to say well is that I put stickers on children throughout the day and mummies and daddies put stickers on children and at the end of the day I see how many stickers that every child has got. So I'm going to give you a sticker, Kelsey, because you're eating your sandwich so nicely. I'm going to walk around like this because I like it, because I'm a bit funny. Now, which colour? Which colour for my clever girl who's eating? Green. green. You I have love a bite green. Have a bite. I love green. And where Daddy should we put first? it? There. Put it there. Okay, no, so. Are like you smiling? Yeah. I like seeing you smile. Right. So, which is your favourite colour? Do you like red or blue or green or yellow? Green. Green. I like green too. Okay, I want to give you a green sticker. I really, really do. I'll tell you what, shall I close my eyes? And then when I open my eyes, you show me that you've eaten a little from the corner and this green sticker goes straight on there, OK? You tell me when you're ready. Tell me when you're ready. Not looking, not look, he can't do it. What's in your mouth? What is in your mouth? What is in your mouth? No! You're going to take all my stickers! Oh, my goodness me! OK, green sticker for you. No, you've got to sit down and finish your mouth like a good girl. OK, I'm going to go now. I'm going to go now. I'll see you all a bit later because I've just got to go and finish my cup of tea. And um, thank you for letting me come in and I'll see what happens. OK. okay. <gasps> good boy. You eat all that up and have a yoghurt? Okay. So, Tanya, why did you go in and intervene? 
Because he was distressed and because the parents did not know how to do anything but make him more distressed. But I need to back off now because obviously I don't want to come in too quickly because if I teach the child to eat, the parents learn nothing. That's the problem, we battle every day with eating. It's... I don't even, sometimes when I do like a nice roast or something, I don't even bother. Lunchtime underway, the third family are now due to come into the house. The Field family from Croydon have learnt to duck and dive because when two and a half year old Ryan doesn't get his own way, his response is always the same. Oh, lovely. 37 year old Mark and 34 year old Fiona are busy working parents. Fiona works part-time as a swimming instructor and Mark is a software developer who manages to work from home one day a week. They've been struggling with Ryan's willful behaviour ever since he was a baby. From a very young age, he, even when you were changing his nappy, he knew he didn't want it changed. And he would scratch me. Um, he knew that would stop me or prevent, you know, slow me down. So now I used to have lovely scratches on my hands, up my arm. <laughs> there are certain situations when you know you're not going to please him and his normal reaction to not being pleased is to either hit you th or throw something or both or spit or all three. Sorry. That's not very nice. You yeah, suddenly get that look and he picks up whatever's nearest to him and it will be whatever's nearest to him and he'll throw it. He, he knows exactly what he wants to do and he knows, mm. you know, you can see him I'm going to throw that, and I'm. You can see him looking around sometimes yeah, yeah. for the. What, what, what shall I do? Which one shall I throw first? No. Sometimes, unfortunately, if you're not looking at him, you don't know it before it, whatever it is he hits you. Has Ryan been naughty? The spitting and the raspberry blowing is a fairly new thing. I would mm. say that's been going on a good few months, mm. but the hitting and scratching and things has been around for as long as I can remember. And by. Well, he doesn't He's do that much, biting. Oh, he does bite you occasionally, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. Often at the receiving end of Ryan's aggressive behaviour is his six and a half year old brother, James. I always get hurt every day. Uh, Ryan? And I've got scratches on my face. Do you mind? Uh, that's enough. Occasionally you feel sometimes James is getting the brunt of something. Sometimes he, you know, Ryan will start to chuck things at him. And James may not be doing anything wrong, but he's doing something that Jack Ryan doesn't want him to do. Again, he knows exactly what he wants. Sure. Mark and Fiona are battling to control Ryan's temper, but they disagree on the best approach yeah, to Ryan. take. I think sometimes our ways of dealing with it can differ. We I'm are different. much more head on it's a particular issue and I'm going to deal with that issue now, which might say I, I fail to do pretty much every time. So what happens is it just gets more aggressive. Well, I think we've come to a point where we can't see it. We seem to have tried all methods. Yeah, you know, and I, I was always hoping that he would just grow out of it. Yeah, just one of those a things that, Yeah. <laughs> what my ultimate our goal is, is for Ryan to be calmer, less aggressive. A more relaxed household. A child you can trust to bring out and not have to worry about, is he going to hurt somebody? Is he going to hurt me? Hello. 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 Hello there. Oh. We're in. Oh. Someone's at home already. Yeah. Yes. Oh, wow. Look at it. Isn't it? Wow. Yes. Amazing. Oh, cool, isn't it? Oh, it's been a long okay. day. Darren, Darren, Sarah. 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 Sorry, I missed That's that. Mark. So, so, so who That's Fiona. Go on. Mark. Mark. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. You should know that one now. again. Sorry. I'm Sarah. 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 Darren. 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 Okay. And then Sarah. that's Kelsey. Kelsey. And Harrison. Is that mine? Who's just appeared? This is James. Hold your horses. And that's Ryan. James and Ryan. Ryan. What? The fields have been in five minutes. I don't know whether I'm just comparing them to the Dixons, but they seem so much more positive, don't they? But a, a sort of a rush of happiness did come into the house with them. It was like, Phew. yeah, the house was feeling a little bit flat before. Because they kept on going, this is great, this is wonderful. Oh, look, fantastic. And Fiona was smiling at her two boys, James, who's six and a half, and Ryan, who's two and a half. 
Sorry. And everyone sort of seemed gleeful. Okay. Harry, we told you about yeah. swinging on the door. Now get off. Yeah. Off. No. Harry. 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 No, get off. No, no, no. Oh. Ryan, properly naughty, tiny tearaway. Two and a half. Chucks everything. Apples, bananas. At people's heads. Yeah. Hmm. Not nice. <laughs> What's interesting to me from watching their profile is that he gets absolutely no real consequence for doing it. I think they're not very assertive with him as parents. I've read that um, Fiona Field says, a contented child is a contented parent. I think for her, her kids have to be happy all the time. Yeah. So obviously if your child does something you don't want them to do, but you smile your way through it because you don't want them to be a discontented child, then their message is, well, it's fine, I'll just do it again then. Yeah. Tony has asked the fields to have lunch alone in the quiet room so she can observe Ryan's behaviour at mealtimes. Today, however, all is peaceful. Yeah, drop it, Ryan. Uh, what is that noise? I would imagine it's one of them. I think it's I would... Kelsey, isn't it? I see Kelsey's not very happy about something. <laughs> Yourself. Don't look at her, don't talk to her. Oh, she's kissing her as well. Don't kiss her. Okay, that's okay, we got a tantrum. Too much eye contact, kissing. Why is the cat still up? I got eat the nose. <laughs> it's on my nose. I'm not sticking my finger inside your mouth. No, arm. it's a game. It's a game. No, time out shouldn't be a game. Well, she's so relieved that her daughter's calmed down. <laughs> right, well, hold your arms again then. <laughs> for a minute, please. Oh, my, my tears. Come, come sit up on Mummy's lap properly. <laughs> right, now you sit here and calm down. What should a timeout be? It should be a period of time where a child is completely not given any attention at all. It's an extreme form of ignoring. And if you do a sort of holding timeout, which is what Sarah just chose to do, you don't look at them, wipe their tears and have a chat with them and kiss them on the head because the message is completely all wrong then for the child. So what do you do instead? Just sit them there and not talk to them? You sit them there, you make sure they're, they're, you're holding them so their head is well back and you look away and say absolutely nothing. It's the first day in the house of tiny tearaways. For Dr Tanya, it's the crucial assessment day. So that she fully understands the parental problems she's got to tackle over the next week, Tanya is spending a day observing from her office. Sarah McMillan from Kent is here to try and conquer four-year-old daughter Kelsey's terrible tantrums. The Field family from Croydon have come looking for help for two-and-a-half-year-old Ryan's aggressive behaviour. <laughs> Mum Sarah and Dad Darren Dixon have brought five-year-old son Harrison to see Tanya in a last-ditch attempt to transform his complex behavioural issues. Don't move! 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 It's not only tantrums, though. He also has a restricted diet of bread, milk and chocolate buttons and always sleeps in his mum and dad's bed. With just six days to tackle all of these problems, Dr Tanya Byron needs to uncover the reasons why they're occurring. And fast. Earlier today, Mum Sarah Dixon told Tanya about her difficult know, relationship just... with five-year-old son. Some, day I just, some days I just hate Harry, and I just 
I shouldn't Donald be like that. Donald sounds really horrible, but I wish I'd never had him. Felt tips, Tony or do you want to gauge use pencils how aware Harrison is of Mum Sarah's feelings crayons. and has asked him to These draw a portrait of the family while his parents observe from the consultation now, room. I want you to draw your family, but I want you to draw your family what it's like with your family at home, OK? So who's the first person you're going to want to draw for me? Dad. Dad. You draw me Dad. <laughs> OK, but I want you to draw what he looks like at home. I want you to draw his face and everything. Will you do that for me? Yeah, OK. And Daddy's smiling. Does Daddy smile at home, then? Daddy smiles at home. OK. Is Mummy smiling as well? Does Mummy smile a lot, or does she, is she cross a lot? Cross. Mummy's cross at home, is she? Has she got a happy face mostly at home, or a cross face? Cross face. A cross face. Do you feel sad when Mummy feels sad? Do you? Does Mummy feel sad a lot? Yeah. Does Mummy cry a lot at home? Yeah. Does she? She does. What does she cry about? Just being naughty. About you being naughty? And what does she say when she's crying about you being naughty? Go to bed. Go to bed. Does Mummy think Harrison is a naughty boy or does Mummy think Harrison is a good boy? Not a boy. What do you want Mummy to say? Do you want Mummy to say that you're a good boy or a naughty boy? Good boy. Tony now joins Mum Sarah and Dad yeah. Darren to discuss her session with Harrison. He's aware that he's the naughty boy, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. He, he's also aware that you're sad. Yeah. He's aware of that. Does that surprise you? Yeah, um, yeah it did. And how yeah. did it make you feel? Um, awful. To think that that's how he associates me as. Mm -hmm. I've got to mm. be the happy one. I'm trying mm. to calm Mum down, calm Harry down, and then for an hour it's stress. But after I've calmed everybody down, it's... So he so associates you with the atmosphere getting better? Mm. Right. I'm the relief. I'm Sarah's release valve. She comes home, she lays into me, and then I sort it out. What do you think the problem is? Probably me. Is that what you think? Mm. It could be me being too soft. No. Seeing me as the... I don't know, probably me, the way I handle things. I think Harrison is a very sad little boy. Mm. If I can be really blunt with you. Mm. I don't think it was out well. Perhaps it is, Austin, I don't know. Because we can't see it, can we? Can you see it when I say it to you? Or not? Still. No. Well, I was very struck this morning when you started crying. He was genuinely distressed that you were crying. He was mm. very, very, very upset. He's That's... You are true, because he's a very loving boy. Yeah. He's very aware of how you feel and how you feel about him. What do you feel about the fact that me, a relative stranger who's only known you for a few hours, is telling you that your son is very, very sad? <laughs> Shocking. Because mm. obviously he's got everything that he wants. Apart from... What is it that he wants from us? He's got material possessions, yeah, but... No, sorry. It's all right. You seem so sad. Well, it's just sort of picking up that as... shocked me. Yeah, if someone can pick it up after a couple of hours of knowing him. And you're not disagreeing with what I'm picking up at all? <laughs> Whilst Dads, Mark Field and Darren Dixon prepared dinner, Ryan and Harrison are getting to know one another in the lounge. On Miss 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 Not do that Miss Go do that Miss 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 Not do that No not touch me! No! Stop! Even my teeth are long! If it's long! Not my tree! Dad! Dad! Daddy! And Mark, come on, my arm! Oh, I suppose I better put sausages in there. Do this. 
not kick me. Dad, Dad. Yes. Yeah. Are you kicking me? He's what? I'm kicking me on. He's all right, he's only a little one. You've been naughty. How about you go and say sorry? Lone parent Sarah McMillan has come to work go. on four-year-old Kelsey's behaviour problems. Kelsey has massive tantrums when she doesn't get her own way, which can last for up to two hours. No, you don't take the bike stand. No, you take the... Right, you can go back indoors now. Yes. Yes, you were told. <laughs> no, you were a good boy, sweetheart. No, you can go back indoors now. No. Yes. You know you do not throw the toys. No, come on. You know you don't throw the toys. has asked one. Mum Fiona and Dad Mark Generally into the consultation Generally. room for their first appointment. I would say Ryan, yeah, is the main... Camp Ooh, you call him the devil child. I d <laughs> you don't know... Not to his face. <laughs> Not to his face. <laughs> but you, but do, you, do you think of him as the devil child? No, I, he... What I find is that when we have time together, and I, and I think I'm guilty here because James monopolizes more of my time, certain I moments. I think the trouble is Ryan does have an iron will. <laughs> Yes. He is very stubborn. He knows what he wants and we do. And it's a clash sometimes. Are you saying that your husband's got an iron will and he's oh, very yes. stubborn? Oh, yes, and he will admit it as well. Right. Yeah, on certain things, I definitely, yeah. yeah um, so are you the devil adult and he's the devil child? Uh, I like to think I'm pretty fair. Like I say, it's maybe my rules are more... Sometimes you can just be a bit too heavy-handed. Yeah. No. And that's it. Whereas yeah, sometimes I say, agree with that. Well, let's go and do this and we'll come back and do that. Mm. Whereas, you, you know... It, you might just say, put your shoes on. It's I'm worried that it will progress further. Mm -hmm. It may not stay if like this. He may not mm -hmm. grow out of it, and it could get worse and worse. Why does he get stronger? OK, you see, my problem so far in the mm -hmm. house is that you've absolutely not let him go. I, I have felt that you've both been quite anxious in the house and really held him close to you mm. all the time. All the time mm. having to chat to him. Oh, look at the toys, look at this. Oh, come here, here's Daddy. Anything so that this child doesn't have a tantrum. So. I need you to help me with that. Yeah, okay. And yeah. that's why I'm asking if you're very anxious, because it feels to me like you're quite anxious to let him have a tantrum.
It's almost 8.30 in the house of tiny tearaways and most of the children are fast asleep. But in the Dixon yeah. suite, things aren't so peaceful. <coughs> at home in Plymouth, five-year-old Harrison Dixon usually goes to bed at 11.30 and ends up spending the majority of the night in his parents' bed. It seems that Harrison's first night at the house of tiny tearaways is going to be no different. I don't know, is it there? It's fine, is it? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm a wise hanging out there. It's all right, we'll rest the kids up a Oh, yeah. I'm trying to dance, I can't hear it. Yeah! Giddy! It's horrible, I hate it. Mm. That's why we always go and get him. Dad! No. <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, Dan. You're making Daddy angry now. <laughs> no, he's so weird. Oh, that noise up there, is it? <laughs> Be quiet. <laughs> he wants that fan turned off. He wants the fan turned off. <laughs> you can hear the wind. He don't like the wind, does he? No. Oh, I might go and sit down on the settee and relax. Oh, I, know. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's listen to our brat. Today was assessment day. Mm. You've watched all these children mm. who all have their own different things going on. Mm. Are you quite overwhelmed? But in a different way to being overwhelmed if there were loads of problems. I suppose in a way I'm quite underwhelmed because I, d I, just, I can't quite see what the problems are, which is a real problem for me. Instead, what's going on in your head? In my head, it's... I know what I'm doing with Kelsey. What are you doing with Kelsey? Dealing with the tantrums, the parenting, sort of shaping up Sarah's parenting. I'm not sure what I'm doing with Harrison because there seem to be so many problems, okay, but the thing friends. that I'm most concerned about is the kind of complete lack of warmth from his parents and why is that? Yeah. And I have no idea what I'm doing with the fields. And that is not a good place to be mousse, with only five mousse, treatment mousse. days. And it's probably going to be another assessment day. And the more I assess, the less, less time I've got to treat. So either these kids don't have the problems that we're being told they do, or this isn't the place for them to be treated because the community just makes everybody feel happier and better behaved. Mm. I'd, I'd much rather be sitting here saying to you, there's too much work to do, than me sitting here saying to you, I have no idea what the work is. It's not a good place to be. After a day in which two and a half year old Ryan behaved exceptionally well, oh, yeah. the fields record video diaries. Day one. I think my diary entry would be frustration. Um, obviously, we've spoken to Tanya, and you know, I mean, she's finding it difficult to see what the problem is. Unfortunately, both our children seem to behave rather impeccably well. Uh, especially Ryan, who hasn't had a single tantrum, a single moment of throwing, a single moment of hitting. And I think Tony's left wondering why on earth we're here. <laughs> Five-year-old Harrison Dixon always sleeps with his parents and has only ever spent five nights alone in his bed. He has now been asleep for four hours, but will he last the night on his own? Where we were. Mm. Unless you got lots of it over there. Don't know. 